When it comes to your academics, a crucial part is how you take your notes. So in this video, I'm going to be proposing my method when it comes to note taking. So I'll be taking you towards the start of my need preparation, fill you with details on how I would take notes, revise them and how I'd go further from there. So on to the video we go. Right, so from the beginning, for each subject, I would maintain two notebooks. And before I go deeper into explaining that, I kind of want to point out that I feel like it should be made a habit to always stick to a particular style of writing, maintain a particular level of neatness when it comes to note taking. So for me, no matter whether it was just a rough book or any notebook in general, I would always write in a very tiny handwriting. So I would minimize the size of my font. And whenever a topic was completed, like if it's a very big topic, then at the corner, I would write a summary of what the topic was. So that if ever I just needed a quick overview or a glimpse of what I was actually studying, I would just go into this particular side of my notebook. Now, the first book would be my coaching notes and the second book would be my self-study notes. And one thing which I've noticed a lot of students do is that they just take notes for the sake of it. So even though everyone would maintain coaching notes, a lot of the people would just write it in a hazardous manner with no particular level of format or something like that. They fail to realize that sometimes the way you generate your notes will motivate you to study for long hours. And once you have this kind of habit of maintaining notes, then it becomes easier. You don't have to think that you're putting an extra effort to get good notes. It just will come naturally to you. One more thing which I want to put out there is I did not really follow the rule that you have to study whatever's taught in the class on that same exact day. Meaning that I would only self-study a chapter completely with that deep understanding once the entire chapter was covered by my coaching teacher. And my way to kind of justify this is that by letting the entire chapter to become complete by my teacher, then I would get a gist of the chapter. And that glimpse or overview of the chapter would help me to kind of interlink the subtopics of the chapter. Now that sounds pretty complicated, but if we take the example of anatomy of flowering plants, I would not study the anatomy of root once it was done in that session of the coaching class. Rather, after completing the stem, the leaf and all of those parts, then I would take it into my hands to go further and get that deep understanding. Because by doing that, once I was really learning about the root, I would already know that there's a difference when it comes to the stem. But if I had studied it on that same day, then I would not be able to make that interlink. And sometimes it's important to kind of interlink the concepts because it'll get you that understanding for longer periods of time. And these chapters which come in 11th standard, if you need to remember it till the NEAT exam, which is two years after, you need to be able to interlink concepts. So the way I would do that is by waiting for the entire chapter to get complete by my coaching teacher and then go one step further and watch YouTube lectures and do my self-study techniques. Having said that, before the class started, like 15 minutes before, I would take out the previous day notes and just go through it. Or I would take out the module and just solve those try yourself questions or something like that, just to kind of reignite it into my brain. But the 100% dedication to complete the chapter on my own would come only after the entire topic was done by my coaching teacher. So that's what I wanted to put out there. Now to talk about my self-study notes for physics, it was kind of a compilation of so many things. So because from the beginning of 11th, I had kind of made it a point to watch Alexa's videos, a large portion of every single chapter would have all of the things that he taught in his lectures. So that was kind of similar to my coaching notes, like the manner I would take them down. But then after that, once the chapter was completed and I had gone through the module like a bit and then solved a few questions, then I would make a formula sheet. And formula sheets are something which I really refer to towards the last month for NEAT because I would not have time to go through the theory part. So just by going through the formulae, I was kind of um, understanding the chapter, or revising the chapter in a fast manner. Then after the physics wala long notes was done, and after the chapter had been done a few times, a few tests had been done, I would again go through the notes of both my coaching and my physics wala notes. And then whichever points which I was sure I was going to forget or things which I really needed to revise again and again, I would kind of note them down at a different page. So I would kind of make a compilation of the tough things in another section. 
so that when I needed to revise and I had less time, I would just have to go and look at these summarized versions. And whichever questions I found difficult or maybe a particular pattern of questions which I was not really sure of or I was very sure that I would forget it sooner or later, I would note them down for every single chapter. So this was kind of the way I would go about for physics. And when it comes to chemistry, it is pretty similar to physics like the manner I would take notes or the manner I would revise them. But for inorganic chemistry, I did not really refer to other videos or anything. I would just, or even the module, I would just take out my NCRT, read it once and highlight, not highlight, but just note down every single point which I knew was essential in the form of a chart or anything like that. So that was my technique for inorganic chemistry. And organic chemistry, just like physics, I would directly note it down during the lecture. So my self-study notes would be like watching the lecture, simultaneously making a note of it in the manner I wanted to. And then whichever points were again and again highlighted or some mechanism which I knew I had to remember, I would note them down in a separate page. So it's similar to physics in that manner. For physical chemistry, I did make notes, but towards the end, I just made formula sheets and just looked at those. But the first time whenever I was watching a lecture, whenever I was learning something or revising something, I would just make a note of it. So note taking for chemistry was a bit similar to physics. But when it comes to biology, I did not do as much note taking as I did for the other subjects. I did write a lot in the NCRT textbook, but whenever I was watching a YouTube lecture, I would watch it completely. During the lecture, I would not make any notes. But once the lecture was completed, I would rewatch it again, like at specific intervals, and wherever I thought it was necessary to highlight or write down, that time I would jot it down. But overall, I would not like simultaneously write down everything. But once the chapter was over and I had gone through my module, Whichever points I needed or needed to kind of revise again and again, that would come in my notes section. But everything that was taught in class or everything that was being taught um, by the lecturer or anything, I would not note it down. But if it was a YouTube lecture, I would re-watch it like at specific intervals like skip and watch and whichever ones I wanted, I would write it down at that point. And again, I would make a lot of diagrams and kind of paste them on my wall. So because my module had a lot of diagrams labeled, if it was essential, I would write it down. And sometimes I would draw the diagram and write the specific points related to it in that corner. And apart from the note taking for biology, I did make a lot of mind maps and flowcharts. So I did explain a bit better in my previous videos, so you can go and check that out. But overall for biology, the amount of note taking I did was less. But I did make a lot of NCRT writing and I did note down previous year questions or highlight them at least. But overall, my self-study notes, especially for physics, is what really got me through. So it was a compilation of YouTube videos, modules, um, sometimes reference books and formulae and all of that and the tough questions. So all of those, when I jotted them down and because I kept on looking at them, that is what really got me towards the end and it played a very, very big role in my need preparation. So this was all about the note taking tips. Again, I have linked a few of my notes, some physics notes this time and a few chemistry and uh, biology notes. You can check them out and it should give you an idea on how important note taking is. Because as I mentioned before, the way you can study for long hours is by making the subject interesting or attractive. And I'm not saying make these aesthetic or pretty notes. If you can, go ahead. But try and stick to your style of writing. And sometimes taking that extra effort to maintaining good notes is what will help you in the future. So that's it for this video. And see you next week. So bye.